So let's chat about the most dangerous symptom of a magnesium deficiency. As you may be aware of, magnesium is involved in over 300 biochemical reactions. At least 57%, probably more, people have low magnesium. Magnesium is involved in energy production, the transmission of nerve impulses, the ability to allow muscles to relax, blood sugar issues, and the list goes on and on and on. Now, several reasons why people are deficient. Either they're not getting it from their diet because they're not eating the right things, or they're eating the wrong things like processed foods, carbohydrates, alcohol, and also inflammation in your gut. Any type of like bloating or chronic inflammation in your gut, that can prevent your absorption of magnesium. Then you have something called phytates that prevent the absorption of magnesium as well. Fluoride blocks magnesium. Soft water versus hard water blocks magnesium. In fact, they've done tests on this. There's a high correlation between people that have these water softeners and a higher risk of getting heart attacks versus people who just drink hard water, spring water, things like that. They have a much lower risk of heart problems. And then you have just all the food additives very specifically the phosphates in the food additives. And you'll probably see it when you start reading the labels on ultra-processed foods. But I want to cover 12 symptoms of a magnesium deficiency, starting with number 12 and working backwards until we get to the most dangerous symptom, which you need to know about. Number 12, muscle cramping. Number 11 is loss of appetite. 10 is nystagmus, where your eye is kind of going back and forth. Number nine is fatigue. Number eight, high blood pressure. Number seven, abnormal heart rhythm. Number six, low vitamin D. It's interesting. You need magnesium to help vitamin D work in the body. Number five, a potassium deficiency. You need magnesium to allow for potassium to work in the body. Number four, migraines. Number three, blood sugar issues. Number two, high levels of cortisol, which is going to affect your sleep. But number one, the most dangerous symptom of low magnesium is pathological calcification. Let me explain what that is. Magnesium is the master mineral that controls other minerals. Magnesium stops calcium from building up in the cells. If there's too much calcium in the cell, it causes the cell to commit suicide. Magnesium also prevents oxidative stress from occurring in the mitochondria, but that can be related to neuroinflammation in the brain, which also involves accumulation of calcium as well. I'm talking about the calcium that builds up in the heart tissue that can cause a heart attack. I'm also talking about the pathogenic calcification that can build up in other soft tissues too, because you have vascular calcification, and then you have non-vascular calcification. Both scenarios have calcium uh, building up in the wrong place because the calcium should be in the bone, not in your soft tissues. And I've talked about vitamin K2 helping protect against calcium building up in the arteries, but you don't want to forget about this magnesium. It's also important. Now, when we're talking about this pathological calcification, we're really talking about a calcification that is not normal. It usually follows inflammation. And some of the key factors that help regulate this and prevent it is magnesium, vitamin K2, zinc, vitamin D, and boron. If you have not watched my video on boron, this is a very neglected trace mineral that is fascinating. And I'm going to put that video up right here. Check it out. Today's topic revolves around the number one missing trace mineral in arthritis. For arthritis, a lot of people are taking vitamin D, and they may not see the difference. Other people take a lot of magnesium for their joints, and they also might not feel much difference unless they have this additional trace mineral involved, and that is boron. Now, let me explain what boron is. It's a trace mineral that we don't have a lot of studies on, but there's a lot of data relating to arthritis that I'm going to share with you. Boron seems to be the key trace mineral to allow calcium to work, to allow magnesium to work. If you're deficient in boron, you're going to have excess amounts of calcium, magnesium in the urine. You're going to tend to get more calcification in the soft tissues. You're not going to have the strong bones. So boron really helps keep the minerals inside the bone and allows vitamin D to be activated and 
help this whole process work. Boron also prevents tooth decay, like in tooth cavities. If you don't have enough boron, you're going to have more inflammation in the joints because boron helps reduce something called C-reactive protein. You may even find that you're getting receding gums, kidney stones, calcium in the arteries, and calcium in the joint because you're deficient in boron. The tissue that contains or stores the most boron is something called the parathyroid gland. Let me explain very simply what the parathyroid gland does. It sees four small glands around your thyroid. And what the parathyroid gland does is produces a hormone that helps control calcium. So let's say, for example, you don't have enough vitamin D or you don't have enough calcium. Well, the parathyroid hormone will increase to extract the calcium from your bone, pull it out so you have enough calcium. So you can look at the parathyroid hormone as kind of like another vitamin D. And what's interesting about the parathyroid hormone is you need this boron to allow this whole thing to work. Even if your levels of vitamin D are normal in your blood, you might have vitamin D resistance. And this is where the parathyroid hormone starts going higher and higher and higher, even though you're taking vitamin D. Well, it's because you have vitamin D resistance, but it can also be you're short in boron. So I think a lot of people are deficient in boron because they really haven't put it on the radar as being something they need. Also, if you're low in boron, you're going to have low amounts of testosterone. You're going to have low amounts of estrogen. Now, when doing a deep dive into nutrition, I always look at research on animals, right? Because sometimes with humans, the research is kind of like hidden and buried. But for animals, it's, it's usually out there. And I found something interesting with horses. If a horse is deficient in boron, their head starts shaking because they have a problem with the trigeminal nerve that causes pain and inflammation, and they're trying to do something to get rid of it. Well, magnesium in boron gets rid of it pretty quickly. There's even data that uh, boron can help decrease the risk of prostate cancer. As far as the amounts of boron to take, I would recommend starting out with like three milligrams, three times a day, and see if your problem is resolved after a period of one to three months. Now, some people take a lot more uh, boron, just so you know, like some people take like 30 milligrams a day. You have to realize that the toxicity level of boron is less than salt. And the heavy tilling of our soils have depleted a lot of these trace minerals, including boron. So I just wanted to put boron on your radar just so you know it's out there. And when it does, there's a little more data to know about arthritis. If you haven't seen this video right here, go ahead and check it out.